All right, now that we've talked about angle of twist, we can actually now consider the statically indeterminate torsion problems. <clears throat> so this actually Again, another reason why I kind of like uh, using the double arrow notation. We talk about torsion. You'll see here that if you can do statically indeterminate uh, axial problems, you get the same thing statically. So you recall the axial situation. What happened? Right? We had bar, it's fixed at both ends, and then possibly you know, some load in the middle, and, um, well, it's not going to happen. Right? So, when you do the free body diagram, don't know is what are these two reactions? A, B, A. The issue is here if we just do some of the forces in the next direction on the free body diagram. F A plus F B equals P. Two equations, I'm sorry, one equation, two unknowns. So that doesn't work. But what we use instead, we use the elongation from B relative to A, has to be zero, right? There's the compatibility condition or some displacement condition. There's always going to be a displacement condition associated with a redundant uh, constraint and condition. And we can deal with this and get this in terms of the internal forces because this would give us this elongation of section C relative A plus the elongation of B relative C. And we know this, we can write this in terms of the external reaction forces. So the elongation of this section is going to F A times its length, which is A over cross section area on the project. This one has minus F B because F B is the direction times its length B right? zero. And so now we have one equation. Two equations, but one, two unknowns, which we solve. So it's going to go the same way for axial. In fact, uh, kind of almost, I'm sorry, for torsion, it's kind of almost a joke. So if you look at this, let's draw the same picture. Let's make it into a torsion problem. Instead, here, P being a force. Let's put a torque here. So now I have a torque that goes in this right handed sense about the uh, axis and x axis. Uh, and again, let's call this distance A and this distance B. Now, uh, you have the same geometry, but in this case, we don't have a cross sectional area. We can keep J. And the material is given, we can figure out G. Okay, so we know how to calculate those. It's, it's, uh, J is just a function. Diameter to the fourth times pi over 32, and g we look up the material. But, uh, okay. Now, when I draw the free body diagram, which, well, let's just draw it. So I draw the origin free body diagram. You have the follow. Here's the uh, torque applied in the middle for right, that intermediary point. Now, I'll draw them this way because I just kind of mimic the way I drew them in 
axial problem. Of course, you can draw them in another way. These are external reaction torques, right? So, as with external reaction forces, you can always write these in any sense you wish. And then, as long as you're consistent, the sign will tell you whether you pick the right direction or flips. So, I'm going to call this torque B. So now uh, you can write the equilibrium condition. In this case, the equilibrium condition is going to be some of the moments or torques around the x-axis. If that's the situation, you can see that T is a positive torque. And then TA and TB, as I've drawn them, are negative torques. TA plus equals torque, right? And if you do the double arrow, you can see exactly the same as axial. I don't really even have to worry about which way my right hand is going or where my thumb is. I can uh, sum them up just like I would sum up an axial problem, right? So I actually get the same exact equation. It's just in terms of the torque, just the forces. And there you go. But again, we have two unknowns. External reaction torques at A and B can uniquely determine just from the, equi from the equations of static equilibrium. So we need to have some other compatibility. Now, in this case, with the fact that the total elongation is zero. Now, again, analogously, uh, the deformation measure for axial for torsion problems is the angle of twist. And here you can see that the angle of twist of B relative to A has to be angle twist from B relative to A has to be. That's our second compatibility. I mean, that's our second condition. That's our compatibility condition, right? So we do the same thing uh, as we did in the axial case. We use the angle and twist equation to relate this condition in terms of the internal reaction torques or and then use Free by diagram. So, if I were to write this out, I'll do this out of one. I kind of took a shortcut. I wrote this way in terms of external one, so let's write this out. So, we get B, C, C is A, is B. B of C relative to A plus the angle of twist of B relative to C. That has to go to zero. The internal, I'm sorry, the uh, angle of twist of section C relative to A, that's the torque in AC times the length of AC, which is A over JG. Right? That's the angle of twist. And uh, you know, like PL or B, all it's the same. So we have A and J, we have E and G, it's the force will be Now, the angle of twist of this, this section, B relative to C, is the internal reaction toward section BC times its length, which is B over JG, and that equals zero. Now, in this case, if you assume that the cross section is the same and the two homogeneous, these guys cancel out as they were in this case, right? But if there's a step or something, obviously, you can't All right. Now, these are the internal reaction torques. We need to get those in terms of the external reaction torques, but that's what the free body diagrams are. So if you look at the free body diagram in section AC, and this is A, here I have the external reaction torque TA. Now here is the internal reaction torque in section AC. I draw it in the positive sense of the outward normal sense. Right? So this is the internal reaction torque AC. And here you can see that that has to Likewise, we can draw it from the right-hand side, and now we have this, this is TB. Here is the internal reaction torque in section CB. Again, it's going in the outward normal direction, to positive for a positive angle of this. So Concept is axial. We always draw it so that uh, the, the, 
internal reaction force, or in this case the torque, is positive, it will give us a positive angle of twist. And that will account for all the signs. But here you can see from some torque on the X, this has to be minus. And now we substitute this relationship and this relationship into here. We do this with some sets of numbers. Sun's going to be uh, well, Now I have TA, the external reaction force, times A, minus T, B, B. Okay, so that's now my second equation. You can see it comes out to be the same as what we had here for axial. That kind of makes sense. And now we have one, two equations for the two unknowns, which we can solve for. It's basically goes the same way as we did. Just like the axial, there was two flavors. Okay, just like in the axial case, there was two two types of problems. One where the elements were in series. Also had problems where the elements were in parallel. Two with an inner core of material, a different different material inside, right? It's fixed here, right? So this is uh, statically indeterminate series. Um, it's the same for torsion. Now, the only difference is for axial, right, the force here, force that acts down in this space. Now, for torsion, this is not force, this is torque, just the previous problem. In this case, it wouldn't be a force, it would be a torque, right? So, That's it. So in this case, you have the condition where total B has to be zero. In this case, the angle of twist doesn't go to zero, but you have the fact that the angle of twist of the inner has to be the angle of twist of the outer section, right? Those two, the angle of twist of the two parts has to be 